until you get that done whatever God has called you into. I don't want you just to be remembered, but I want you to leave a legacy. What's a legacy? That it continues on from generation to generation. That when they see what you did makes a change and a difference. It's not just when you leave here, there's a few people remember you and they may mourn of you. No, I want you to have to be, be so impactful that when you leave, they are shaking their head because they know a king has left. A queen has left. A man and a woman of God who has done great things has left. And that Satan is glad that you left. If the Lord tarries, he's going to be glad that you up and out of here. Because you're going to be impactful. As they said, this is, are these the men who turned the whole city upside down? They turning the world upside down? I want you to be that part and that legacy. I want you to be upon the generals. I want you to be a part of the people who made a difference and made a strong foundation here in the name of Jesus. I thank you guys for joining in. Thank you guys for sharing. Get the hearts up because we're going to go somewhere powerful. I, I want you to understand this is the completing your assignment broadcast. And what am I saying? God has given me the mandate. But he said, he said, tell the people, dream it, start it, and finish it. Uh, then he gave me the next part of it. He said, tell them to leave no work left undone. Uh, if you don't finish it, that means there's work left undone. I want you to complete your assignment. Now, this is personal. Listen, this is personal. This ain't nothing personal to other people, but it's personal for you. Um, I can't sit there and blame my wife. I can't blame my kids. You only can blame yourself for not getting it done. You can't say because I was on the other side of the tracks. No, the word says and the word declares, he says, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. It's not just a saying, but it's a promise. But I want you to know as you listen to me, as you connect with me, the capacity to do what you've been called to do, you're going to get infilled. You're going to get empowered. You're going to get moving. It's not just going to be a motivation, but it's going to be an elevation to go to the place where you need to go. You got to become the person that you're not yet. To go to the place you need to go, you have to become the person you're not yet, but you're going to be that person. You're going to be the man of God. You're going to be the woman of God. You're going to move forth in this thing. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, thank you. We're about to get started. We already started. The the get the hearts up, get the shares up. I thank you for those who are connecting already. Uh, let me share this with you. Um, in the book of Acts. Chapter 27, verse 27 through 28. I'm going to paraphrase this. The Apostle Paul is on his way to Rome. It was already mandated that he needed to go there because the gospel needed to be preached in Rome. He's bound. He's there as a prisoner. And as he's trying to make his way, the ship falls into a storm. That this storm is about to take everybody's life. But the man of God received a word that those who stay on this ship should not lose their life. That everyone who stays amongst him will not lose their life. But as the ship continues to go, listen to me now. It gets into a place that it can't move no more. The ship runs into a sandbar and it starts to break apart. And then the people on the ships got to make a decision. Those who can swim, swim, and those can't, needs to hold on to something and make their way to shore. But I want to share this with you. Those who couldn't swim, those who had to hold on to something, I want you to know that you need to hold on to something because you're going to make it. I want you to know, even though this storm has been in your life, just hold on because there is a place where God has called you and preordained you to be. And though the storm broke the ship, as the man of God got the information from the almighty God that you're going to make it, that you're going to go to what I called you to do. You're going to finish the work that you have started. They're in water. Quite sure it's bitterly cold. I'm quite sure that it's doubt in their mind. But when you get a word from the divine, you can rest assured you're going to make it too sure. When you get a word from the divine, you can rest assured you're going to make it to shore, that you're going to make it to that place of safety. 
I need someone to understand tonight that I need you to hold on. You're going to make it. You're going to reach your destination, but you're right there at the finish line. You're right there about to get the job started, about to get the new business started, about to go forth in ministry, about to launch that new broadcast, about to launch that new uh, album, whatever it is. But you just need to hold on. The enemy's going to try to outlast you. He's going to try to wear you down. He's going to try to tear you down. He's going to try to break your mind and make you think that God truly say that. You can imagine Paul said, Lord, I thought I was supposed to go to Rome. What's going on? But the Lord told him, be still. You're going to make it through. And as the man of God who's on his way to the shore in the water. Got the word from the Lord that no one's going to lose their life. No one's going to be harmed, but we're going to get to the other side. They reach to the other side. Listen, listen, listen. They get to shore. They meet some people who are there. And now, as I said, they're cold. They need some fire. They need some heat. They go there and they start to build a fire. It's Paul's time to get some of this wood and Paul goes and adds more firewood to the fire a serpent bites his hand the barbarians as what they call them upon the island said this man has got to be cursed um, because he escaped the sea but now he's going to lose his life because a serpent has bit his hand and they're waiting for him to die. They're waiting for him to lose his life. But it wasn't so. Let me tell you, the enemy can try to attack you in various ways. But it should not prevail over you. The enemy can try different tactics. But it shall not prevail over you. Why? Because God is covering you. I want someone to understand tonight that you are covered by the almighty God. We have to have a rest assured. The Bible says, if you believe in God, believe in Jesus. If you believe in Jesus, have faith in Jesus. That if he told you that you're going to do it, that you're going to do it. You have to get to yourself where I'm going to doubt any outside noise. I'm going to doubt any attacks or attempts of the enemy. And that's what Paul did. He took that serpent and he shook it off. And he shook it into the fire. I want you to know that you need to shake some things off tonight. Some things that's been bothering you. Some things that's been hanging on to you. Some things that's been holding on to you. You need to put these things upon that fire. What is this fire I'm talking about? I need you to put it in this Holy Ghost fire. The consuming fire. That burns up the things that need, don't need to be in your life. The things that you are focusing on that you know that you got to let go. The things that you are holding on that God says it's time for you to turn it over. As Paul did, he shook the thing off into the fire. What is it tonight that you say, I need to shake this thing off? Because the snake jumped out because it was warm. But the fire burned it up. See, we don't need just lukewarm believers anymore. Because what the word says? He says, I'd rather you be cold or hot. But since you are lukewarm, I will spill you out. But God is calling for an elevation of someone that the fire of God is going to come alive once again. The passion of God is going to come alive once again. The hunger of God is going to come alive once again. Just hold on. Hold on to what? The promise that God has said to you. Hold on to that word that God has spoken to you. Hold on to the prophecy. And as you got the prophecy, God says, I need you to move into your prophecy. Meaning when you get those word this season, I need you to move into it. No matter what tries to hinder you. No matter what tries to restrain you. As God has spoken the word. Hold on to that word. Hold on to what God has said. Hold on to his promise. Hold on to that prayer that was prayed over you by your mother, by your father, by your pastor. That prayer is going to sustain you. The word of God is going to sustain you. The word that God spoke to you and promised you, you can hold on to that word. 
Paul received the word that you got to go to Rome. And though he was shipwrecked, though a venomous snake bit his hand, his end result that he made it to the destin, his destination. He made it to the place that he was supposed to be. I'm just trying to say to someone, you have trials and tribulation that's been in your life. But God just saying, hold on. You had worries, hangups, setups that you're not even understanding what's going on. God said, just hold on. Nope. I see it. I know it. The word says and the word declares, all things work together for good for those who love the Lord. Those who are called according to his purpose. Say, I want you to say all things. When God says all things, just in the English, it means all things. You're like, man, of God, I don't see how this is supposed to work out. Um, it's not our decision to how it's supposed to. Just know that it will work out. How you're going to see yourself through is for you to trust in the one who said it's going to work out. Lord, you said all things work together good. You see how my marriage is. You see how my family is. You see how my finances is. Yep, all things are going to work out. It's sickness in my body. All things are going to work out. Lord, I feel like my mind's about to explode. And all things will work out. That the one thing that the enemy meant for harm, God's going to turn around for your good. So you got to understand, even when Paul got bit by that snake, after he got bit by the snake, they said, this man is a God. They say, this man is not ordinary. He's extraordinary. They try to start praising him. As you get the turnaround, people are going to praise the God that they see you walking with. They're going to praise the God that you they see you talking with. They're going to praise the God that they see brought you out of that storm, brought you out of the shipwreck, brought you out of the fiery trial, and placed you on solid ground. That they see that God in you. They're going to reverence and say, what must I do? to be saved like you how can I have the patience as you how can I forgive like you and you tell them it's the Lord's doing you tell them that I have something greater in me than that's in the world and so I'm going stay in peace I'm going to stay in love I'm going to stay rejoicing I'm going to stay in the presence of God I'm going to hold on to my peace I need someone to say this to you say I'm going to hold on to my peace I'm going to hold on to my joy I'm going to hold on to the everlasting father. Somebody needs to say, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to hold on to the promise what God said. And I'm not going to be moved. I'm not going to be gone astray. That as you hold on, you can rest assured. You're going to make it through. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 4 another passage the disciples got a word from the Lord Jesus that we're going to go to the other side they get into the boat and here goes what another storm listen storms are going to come the Bible says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It never said it wasn't going to form. It said it should not prosper. But as they got the words from the Lord Jesus, we're going to go to the other side. The storm brew. Jesus is in the bottom deck relaxing. The disciples come and say, Lord, cares not that we about to perish? Jesus gets up from his sleep resting and he rebukes the storm, rebukes the wind and says to his disciple, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Hmm. I want you to know that you do have the faith that you need already inside you. You already have the imparted 
gifting, the imparted capacity you need to do all that you've been called to do. Because I heard this earlier in my spirit. He says, you already have everything you need inside of you. Okay? Everything you need is already downloaded in you. We just got to get it to the surface. Um, the Bible says, have faith as a mustard seed. And I was explaining this to my brother in the faith. Uh, I said, do you know that the mustard seed, that little tiny seed will grow into the one of the biggest trees out here upon this earth. You don't have to tell it to grow into that tree. It's already inside of it. It already knows what to do. So once it's planted, it already starts. And once it gets germinated into the ground, I'm saying to someone, once you get rooted to the Lord Jesus, that the thing that's already inside you is going to come out. That as you get planted into the Lord, as you get planted into the word, everything you need you need is already inside you so as that seed gets planted nobody has to tell it hey you're a mustard seed you're supposed to grow no it's going to grow it's going to reach its full potential why because it gets rooted the way you're going to reach your full potential is to get rooted unto the lord amen as you get rooted unto the lord you will start producing fruit hold on Yep, you're going to be in a place that seems dark, it's cold, you seem lonely. It seems like nobody else is around. That's okay. Hold on, because eventually you're going to pop through. Eventually you're going to come out and you're going to go forth. Right now things seem in dark. Things don't seem to be moving. But as you hold on to the word of the Lord, as he told him, we're going to the other side. I'm declaring to you that you're going to go to the other side. I'm declaring to you that you're going to reach your full potential. I'm declaring to you that you're going to be more than an overcomer. I'm declaring to you that you're more than a conqueror. That means you're going to do exceedingly, abundantly. You're moving past what your parents did. You're moving past what other people in your family did. No, you are the destiny maker. You're changing the destiny. You're changing the legacy. You're changing the thing that that projected in your family the cycles addictions being broken because of you a property will be broken because of you that name that was over your head of these people are troublemakers these people are liars no that will not be you because you're breaking forth. You're coming forth. And as you receive the word, I'm telling you to receive your faith today. I need you to get that hunger and thirst back again. I need you to get close to the Lord once again, because when you're in the proximity of the Lord Jesus, you can rest assured that you're going to get to the other side. When you, they, they were in the boat with the Lord. Now the Lord abides in you. See, they was in the boat with the Lord. And the Lord had to remind them, like, I'm with you. Why are you being fearful? Why are you doubting? Didn't I say we're going to the other side? I want you to know that Lord, the Holy Spirit, abides in you. And you can rest assured you're going to make it to the other side. That now you have the authority. When Jesus ascended on high, he said, I'll give power unto you. He's given power unto us. All power is his. And he says, I give it unto you. So it means now you have the authority and you have the power to rebuke the storms of your life. You can say, peace be still. You can rebuke those situations and circumstances that's trying to plague you. You can rebuke those storms that frustrate you. You can rebuke those storms that say, peace. Ah, I'm declaring peace in my life. I'm declaring peace over my children. I'm declaring peace in my mind. I'm declaring peace in my community. I'm declaring peace in my church. I'm declaring peace in my business. I'm declaring it.
I'm declaring it. That every storm that has tried to brew and every storm that's been there and every delay that's been trying to hold you back should no longer have any place in your life. As you move forth, you hold on to the word that God's given to you. As they said, as he said, he said, you're going to, we're going to the other side. What's that other side that looks like for you? Financial freedom, salvation for your home. Amen. Marriage being rekindled. Children giving their life to the Lord. Your ministry starting, your business starting. That you have a voice that's going to be heard. A face that's going to be known. The Lord says, I will make your name great and place you before great people. The Lord gave you that word. You can hold on to it. Man, God doesn't look like nothing's moving. We don't look at how we don't walk by our sight, but we walk by faith. And we hold on to the faith. We hold on and we keep it out there until we reach what we need to reach and get what we need to get. Don't pull back your anchor too quick. Don't pull back that rod too quick until you get to catch what you're looking for. No, I keep it out here. I get a bulldog tenacity. It means I'm going to lock on to this thing. You know, the bulldogs, uh, pet bulls, uh, one of the a lot of people fear these dogs because they know when they bite, they get that locked jaw. You can't just just get them off. No, mm -mm. even the owner can't get it off. The, when they get locked in or something, it's even hard for the own owner to get the dog. I want you to have that mindset that I'm locking on and I'm being focused this year. I'm locking on to my vision. I'm locking on to my dream. I'm locking on to deliverance for my family. I'm locking on and I'm not going to stop until I see it. I'm not stopping until everyone's saved in my family. I'm not stopping until I see the change in my finances. I'm not stopping until I see me manifesting my dreams, my vision, my goals. I'm not going to stop until I see the manifestation. Someone say, I'm not going to stop. Hold on. And that's what I mean. You're going to hold on to it. Hold on, you're going to see it through. Hold on, you're going to break out of it. Hold on, the vision. Though it tarries, it shall not tarry. For at the point in time, it shall manifest. That's why I'm speaking to someone right now um, who felt like giving up, who felt like giving in, who felt like, ow, why am I keep, why I keep going through this? Why am I still here? What's the point? It don't seem to be working. No, you don't declare that. The power of your confession. What do you want to see? We call those things that be not as though they are. We call them. We call them. We call them. We say, as Jesus said, we're going to the other side. Paul said, no one on this ship shall perish. Their words did not come back void. I declare your word will not come back void. You just keep putting it out there. You keep putting it out there. Man, they don't seem to be shipped. No, nope, you keep putting it out there. In the realms of the spirit, things are shifting. Things are uplifting. I, I received the word. You got to bind the strong man in order for the walls to come down. So whatever strong man, whatever things that's hinder, restricting you in your life, you have to bind these things. Wherever the hold up is, wherever thing, the lack is, we bind those strong men. If it's in your mind, Lord, I bind the strong man of my mind. I said, whatever's trying to hold my mind, hold my vision, hold my passion, it no longer has any capacity or strength to be able to come against me or my family. Are we there? And as you bind that strong man, those walls that brought restriction and restraint will come down. You got authority and power in your words. Use them. And as you use them, you can hold on to them. And the words in the atmosphere, they're breaking up foundations. They're breaking up chains. They're breaking up patterns. And you keep just speaking. You keep speaking. You keep speaking. And watch. It'll burst. Because your capacity is building. And you're holding on to the word. And you're not being shaped or moved about what the situation looks like. They'll say, you still believing? Yes, I'm still believing. I still holding on because I received the word. I read the word. I spoke the word. And the word should not come back void in my life. 
your capacity is building tonight. That when you speak a word, it shall come to pass. Your capacity is going to be lifted up. That when that word comes out of your mouth, it should not go unheard. It shall come forth. It shall come forth suddenly. Remember when Jesus had to curse the tree? Even that thing that you need to curse. Some things we don't pray on. Some things we need to curse at the root. That no longer it will bear any fruits. Anything that does not bear fruits in your life, curse it at the root. Amen. Curse that thing and say, nope. You coming out that you you cycle of, of wrong relationships, I curse you at the root. Not having enough in property, I curse you at the root. Sickness, cancer, diseases, anything that you see in your family, diabetes. No, 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 a hundred times no. You understand sicknesses of the devil? That's not that's not the best for the that's not what God has for his children. But as you raise your capacity, as you raise your standard, and you say, no, no longer will it stand in my life. I'm not going to speak nothing but what God says about me in my life. Man, man of God, this runs in my family. But you say it stops here. The buck stops here. Lord, you was wounded for my transgressions. You, you was wounded. The chastisement of my peace was upon you. And through your stripes, we were healed. I make that declaration that you are healed tonight. Whatever healing that you need, whatever thing you need to be resolved, hold on to the word that's being released that you are going to make it through, that you're going to the other side, that you will reach the shoreline, that you will reach your destination, wherever it is that God has called you into, you shall reach it. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. So get into your mind right now. What is it that you need shift? What is it that you need change? What is it that you say, I'm going to hold on to. I receive this thing. Um, I, I let things go. And I shouldn't have. God told me to do this, but I didn't do it. Challenges came. Storms came. Because the word will be tested. Amen. The word will be tested. And don't think it's strange. I'm going to say this to someone. The same thing that you're going through, somebody else is going through. Somebody else has already been through it. And he's like, Lord, as you brought someone else through, you're going to bring me through. I'm not a respecter of person. Somebody else, believe me, somebody else is having challenges in their marriage. Somebody else is having challenges in their body. Somebody else is going, somebody else has been through and gone through. I can testify. I I can testify. I know. And that's why I can speak with passion. If God said it, he's not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he's going to repent. He don't need to repent. I said it. I said it. And I put it out there. And I stand on my word. Stand on his word. Uh, a lot of times we can't trust ourselves because we say lies and we always around the lies that we say we don't keep our word so sometimes it's hard for us to, to believe God's words because we don't believe our own words Did somebody, can I talk to somebody and sometimes we can't believe God's words because we can hardly believe our words but we're going to make a shift God, I know I understand that you don't you, you mean right and you, you didn't want to say certain things and you said certain things that didn't come past and now you have the stigma that you didn't keep your word but listen, ah, hallelujah it says mercies are new each day I'm saying that his mercies are new each day but you don't have to have that same formal mentality maybe you didn't make it through before maybe you didn't hold on before maybe things didn't change before but today, tonight is a new night Today is a new day. This is a new year. As I say, you're going to become the person you need to become. God spoke and said to me, and I shared with you, you haven't heard it, but I'm going to say it again because it's good. God's going to give you the grace to become, the grace to move, and grace to do. It's through God's grace you'll become the woman of God, the man of God you're supposed to be. Through God's grace, you're going to move in positions 
You're going to move out of positions. You're going to move to where you need to do. God's going to give you the grace to do it. You feel like, I'm stuck. I'm stuck. No longer. God's going to grace you to move. Then you're going to have the grace to do. Can someone hear me? Grace to do. I can do all things through Christ. God's going to grace you to do it this time. You're going to see it all the way through. Woman of God, man of God, listen to me. You will see it all the way through. It will be finalized. I see you receiving the papers you need. I see you receiving the house that you've been asked for. I see you receiving that business. I see you going forth and ministering. I see you go forth and doing everything that God has called you to do. I see you going forth and you shall receive it and you shall do it. It's done. It's already done. Hallelujah. I had this dream, this vision. And I was fighting this. And let me share this with you because somebody needs to hear this. I was fighting some type of entity. I just pull it like this. And I had weapons. And I was using, I had like a shotgun. I was, it was very like clear. I was like, I had the, um, what's that stuff called? Gunpowder. And I was loading up the gun, shooting, but it wasn't, the entity was not moving. It wasn't, it wasn't moving. It was like that, that weapon wasn't strong enough. Then there was another one on the wall and I grabbed it and I, and I loaded it. And then when I shot it, a light came out and like a, it wasn't a bullet, but it was a harpoon and it hit the, hit the, hit that entity and it fell back but the Lord was showing me that we can't use the same weapons in this season it is you need to come up higher than what you've been doing you've been doing the thing the same way but that 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 strategy is not working you have to come up to something higher you have to get something a little more stronger than what you've been doing the the five minute prayer is not enough the little just D daily devotion is not enough you have to get ruthless and you have to get angry and you have to get tired and you got to say I'm going to break whatever this thing is in my life you have to go at it with a tenacity as I said before as a pup dog as a bulldog as someone who says I'm not stopping until whatever this thing is is broke out of my life God has given you the authority and power to break it so we go to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm coming to you. And you have authorized me. And I come in the name and the character and likeness of who you are. In the name of the Lord Jesus, every force that's been against me shall no longer have power over me or over my family. Let's get to the root of the matter, whatever that thing is. Whatever you need to do, break, make you an altar, a prayer spot. Have a place where you say, I go and I engage in the spirit and I go after whatever's been attacking because if the thing wants to kill and take you out it's not we have to get serious about this thing our life and live the life that God is saying I've given you authority the Bible says in the Bible class I've given you authority and power over all the works of the enemy so we ask the Holy Spirit Holy Spirit show me what I need to do how I need to do, what's holding up, what's to restrain, is it sin in the camp, whatever it is, let's change it tonight, amen. See, the weapons I wore from not carnal, but mighty for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imagination, everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, whatever it is, it has to come down. We holding on to the word. Father, I thank you tonight for those who are under the sound of my voice. As we come together, you said one should chase a thousand, two should put ten thousand to fight. Father, we are in agreement tonight. Lord God, we're calling unto you and saying every adversary that has blocked 
that's restrained, that's held us up, no longer should have any power. I'm speaking that, Lord God, in this season, those who are listening unto me will have the resistance. They will have the fortitude. They will have the empowerment to hold on until they receive that which you said is rightfully theirs. That, Lord God, they put their faith out and don't bring it back until they get exactly what they've been asking for. Father, give them the endurance, Father, to continue that this is a marathon. This is not a sprint. That whatever they've been asking and receiving, that it's on the way. That it shall not be bound up or held up. As you said to Daniel, the moment that he set his mind to pray, the answer was there. But there was something in the spirit holding up. Anything holding up in the spirit of the word that you need to release in their life. I speak that it be released right now. Anything that you said that's rightfully ours, you said that we should be blessed going, blessed coming, blessed in the city, blessed in the town. Words that you have declared that Lord God we received because we are no longer under the curse because we are the seed of Abraham and you took the curse off of us. So Lord God any curse that stain that has not been removed we ask you to release it right now. Lord God we put in the atmosphere words of prosperity, words of diligence, words of overcoming, every attempt of the enemy to try to keep us bowed. Father, as this night we ask him for a shift in the spirit, that our minds can be at peace. As you said in your word, you declare that the storm should be still. We declare every storm that's been brewing in our life right now to be still. We declare that every word, every mountain, everything that was set up against us shall not be able to overtake us. Father, you have declared in your word as you said to Paul that you should not lose your life I declare that they should live a life and live it to the fullest that with long life will you satisfy us Father I'm speaking against any agents of sickness and disease that plague their family that no longer will it have any power Father we enter into that rest that as you said we shall go to the other side I'm declaring that where they need to go they shall make it they shall do it they shall move in it no longer will they be hindered or restrained. Father, break up any strongholds, any walls that needs to come down. As you told the children of Jericho that they needed to shout. I speak that they will release a shout in the spirit that will bring every wall, every power, will no longer have any restraints or any permission in their life. As you have given us the authority, whatever is not permitted in heaven should not be permitted on earth whatever is not legal in heaven should not be legal in earth so we have the authority backing us of the heavenlies father sickness is of the devil it has no part in us Pro poverty is of the devil it has no part in us father tonight Make the shift and move us into position that we receive everything that's rightfully ours. Father, the generations have passed. The things that's been held up, that had our name on it, that had our family name on it, whether it came from our great-grandmama or grandfather's father, these things still belong to us. I speak property is about to be released. I'm speaking finances is about to be released. That that is rightfully ours and we inherit it. You said when we got here, you gave us everything to life and godliness. All things are ours. So today, we're holding on to the promise that we move into the finished works of Jesus. We move into the thing that has already been completed by Jesus. Father, we release our faith and take it by grace that's already ours. We, we hold it, we claim it, we receive it. We don't let it go until we receive everything that's rightfully ours. Thank you for hearing us tonight. Thank you for moving us into a position that we should go and possess everything that belongs to us. We hold on to your word. We hold on to your promise. No good thing are you withholding from us. So we hold on to the promise of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.
we got some word. We got the word. We got, we prayed. And so if you have anything else, I see a couple comments I'm about to ask. If you have anything you want to need agreement, pray on, you can place it in the comments right now. Um, how do I pray for my body to be healed? I feel I'm not doing something right. See, first of all, it's not, so we don't have, we have the, the power that we have comes from the Lord. We don't have power. God gives us power. Um, so one thing you have to do is remove the doubt. Um, we, once we pray, amen, we praise and we thank God that it's already done. Um, when we keep praying about the same thing, it's almost like, well, we don't believe that it was done when we said it the first time. Like he didn't hear. So we'll keep praying like, Lord, I want you to hear me this time. And maybe you didn't hear me. Maybe I got to say it louder or maybe I need to say it in a different way. But no, it's not that. So what you have to do is stick to the word and say, Lord, I thank you that through your stripes, I am him. Um, there may. Uh, hallelujah. I believe the Holy Spirit is telling me to share this. So let me say this. It could be some blockers. Listen, people of God. Sometimes healing comes through deliverance. If unforgiveness, bitterness, and strife is there, if you heard when I pray, anything that's unlawful, if you give something legal ground by keeping bitterness and unforgiveness, that thing can still have legal ground because you open up the door. So what you have to do is release yourself and release that thing. So if it's unforgiveness, it's business. If it's, this is just one way. It's one way. I'm, I'm, and I think I need to say this for a particular reason. So if you have anything that like that, that you're holding on to, you have to release that.